Hi, my name is John. And my name is Lloyd. And we're the hosts of The Pint. A pop culture podcast. Lloyd, if you had to tell any of the people out there that might be listening to The Pint for the first time about anything uh, unsavory or disconcerting we might do on the show, what would you warn them about? Well, sometimes we drop spoilers and sometimes we swear like motherfucking sailors. Fuck yeah, we do. You heard it from him. You've been warned. Listen in. Kiss your ass good <laughs> <laughs> <a> fucking face. <laughs> hey, what was that face Larry just made? I don't know. <laughs> but Spamzy. <laughs> Spamzy. This is the pint. Uh and uh, my name is John. <laughs> my name is Lloyd. I'm Larry. Yeah, oh. that's Larry down there. That is Larry Spam-Z. down there. Spamzy. Spamzy. face. You made me laugh for the face. <laughs> so uh, here on the pint and out there in uh, in in the entire world, especially the United States, so we call it Pintland. The Pintland. Uh, it's Thanksgiving week, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say the entire world. Then I. I. You didn't hear what I said. I said not. Not everywhere. Not everywhere. Okay. <laughs> for uh, any of our international listeners, if I'm to believe the numbers, we have some international listeners. We do. Um. Yeah. I, I hope... wouldn't. Frankly, I wouldn't even think Native Americans celebrate it. Probably. No, probably not. Probably yeah. not. You're, You're probably right, right about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I completely understand that. Yo, um, no, me too. I'm on board with them, actually. <laughs> but if you're out there, if you're out there and you're not in America, uh, I hope that the fourth uh, Thursday in November is a great day for you, mm-hmm. no matter what, and you have a good time. But here in America, we do celebrate Thanksgiving, and let's just be honest, it's we're forced to. Yeah, we we have to, right? It's it's yeah. it's it's all about the food, football, family, all the Fs. Um, you're going to have that drunk uncle that's going to tell you that either Biden's an asshole or Trump's an asshole or yep. blah, blah, blah. There's going to be un- discomfort physically from too much eating. Uh, you know, you're going to watch too many football it's games. going to be but some belt loosening. Yeah. I got a couple questions for you guys. Um, sure. Be- because let's be honest, uh, maybe most people will say the idea of family is most important. And I do love family, but I think food is king on, on Thanksgiving. Now, me, I'm, I got a, cu- a few questions. Question number one. And I'll tell you my answer right off the bat. Turkey. <clears throat> yep. Overrated or what? Uh, Larry, overrated or are, you, or are you a turkey fan? No, it's the worst. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lloyd, how do you feel about turkey? Uh, I, you know, when turkey is cooked well, you know, when it's moist and it's not all dried out and it's not slimy and it's not five days old, it, it's pretty good. There's like a half hour time period where it's pretty good. One half also, hour. You, yeah, but you also like ginger candy. Yeah, that's true. I haven't had any in a while, but I, I am a fan. <laughs> well, you haven't time traveled back to 1806 in a while to get it. <laughs> I love me a nice ginger chew. <laughs> hey, Doc Brown, set the fucking time machine for 1806. I need yeah. ginger candies. Um, <laughs> okay, so I think we can all agree, though. I'm just going right, to throw one we, more on there. Can we go? Yeah, there. let's go a little deeper. I oh, we're, oh, oh no, we're going to go deeper, but I want, right. I'm going to go into a meat again. Because okay. I've always felt this isn't necessarily a Thanksgiving favorite. But it's it's a weird one that shows up on Thanksgiving in some people's houses. Yeah, a baked ham. I, I yeah. don't get it at all, Larry. Baked that's, ham. That, that's an Easter thing, and uh, it also sucks. Yeah. Okay. I, I know it is mostly Easter. I do know some people might celebrate Thanksgiving yeah. with a, with a ham as well. Uh, Lloyd, yeah, the are you only a- the only good thing about that fucking baked ham is first actually actually nothing, but yeah. it is it is jammed with cloves. Which no. reminds me a lot of my like oh, goth ex girlfriends, okay. like from <laughs> you know, because they used to smoke those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So other than that, it fucking sucks. <clears throat> you like you like the pineapple rings and the cherries on the. I love pineapples, but yeah. not on a ham. <laughs> I don't want a hot pineapple either. Fuck yeah, either. hot pineapple's <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> no, I don't want a hot it's pineapple. I like it. I like a nice grilled pineapple. With some I'm not surprised. Uh, this is not surprising me. No, yeah. yeah. Ham has no place at uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Well, what about Easter? Let's just say Easter. Uh, Let's just talk uh, about yeah, ham. No, I'm good with Easter. Um, 
a nice, you know, it's got to be glazed. And again, it's got to be somewhat moist and not all dried out. You said moist and, like four fucking times this episode. So you far. know, so there's people out there that don't like that word moist. I love there's it. There's a lot of people that don't I'm like a it. Fan of moist. <laughs> yeah. People, moist people really don't like that word. Right. But you know what my mom's makes uh, in addition to a turkey on Thanksgiving? A lasagna. Uh, a nice lasagna, exactly. My yep. father-in-law brings when we when we have Thanksgiving here, Lindsay will make a turkey and uh and our neighbor uh will come over, Trudy, and she'll make some stuff. And my father-in-law will bring a lasagna, which I, I had never done before, and it's overkill, but it's nice to have it because honestly, I, I don't really want anything to do with turkey. <laughs> yeah, I'll generally you know? make I'll generally make a lasagna or a stuffed shell or some kind yeah. of uh some kind of a dish like that. A manigot. Yeah. A manigot. I'll make a All manigot. Right. So before we get into our movie, this episode, by the way, is SFA 80 science fiction, fantasy, action 80s, where we talk about kind of like the lower grade uh, science fiction, fantasy, action movies of the 1980s. But before we do that, I do want to ask one more question. For me, when I sit down to whatever Thanksgiving table I'm lucky enough to be asked to, the star for me is I get my plate and I get a little bit of turkey. Or maybe a turkey leg. I do like the leg. And then for me, it's all the sides, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you guys. I'm going to ask you two two questions in one shot. What is the side that you're looking for at every Thanksgiving table that you cannot wait to get your hands on? And number two, what is the one that makes you run? I'll tell you mine right now. I had never had it before. My mom never made it. But I think maybe someone in Lindsay's family had made it. Fucking that green bean casserole. <laughs> I know it's... I, I, I know. I know... That that is like kind of just like Campbell's soup. It's got and the garlic, little fried onions, onions on it. Yes, it's like I, cream, it's like cream of mushroom soup with fucking of, canned green beans. <laughs> absolutely, but for some reason, I love that so much. And the other one I love uh, that I look for is a stuffing. I, I'm always looking for a really good stuffing. Those are the two that I look for. The one I run from is that fucking candied sweet potatoes with marshmallows. Oh, fuck on the off! No, nah, no. Nah. Well, first of all, if you're putting marshmallows on it, you're an idiot. I will make you a candied sweet potato that'll fucking knock your socks right I off. I challenge you right now. You don't have to do yeah. it right now. I challenge you because I'm telling you right now. People candied... come to Thanksgiving just for that when I fucking make it. The next time you it's come just... over for any reason, for any recording or anything, bring a small casserole dish of it. And if you're right, you're right. But I'm telling you right now, when I see, yeah. when I go to someone's house and 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 I, I thank you for asking me over for Thanksgiving, I appreciate you, but I will not be dipping the serving spoon into that fucking bullshit. Lloyd... Give me your give me your one that you can't wait for and the one that you are not going to touch. Uh, Lloyd's frozen, so I'm going to go to Larry and Lloyd will come back in a second. Uh, first of all, I, I really don't enjoy Thanksgiving um, really for any reason. Uh, I don't enjoy much of the food. I, I hate turkey so much that it kind of ruins the sides for me, but I do that's, love that's mashed potatoes. Hatred. Yeah, it's the whole holiday. It's just, just awful. I mean, I love my family. Well, I don't have family, but I love Jen's family. Uh, so, you know, it's great to hang out with them. Uh, the football games are usually shit because it's usually yeah. the fucking Cowboys and the fucking Packers and teams I couldn't give two fucking shits about. The Lions, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of fu fucking likes the Lions. Like, you know, so. Uh, but, I mean, as far as your typical sides, I love mashed potatoes when they're made properly. Big fan of mashed potatoes. The one I run from is probably stuffing not a stuffing what? fan what yeah don't dig on stuffing jen loves stuffing oh i love uh, stuffing so much yeah i don't i don't like it like i like like a like a fancy like if you do like a cornbread and sausage stuffing like i like stuff like that but like your typical like stovetop like no i got no fucking time for no it. like, like a straight up homemade stuffing like for me my mom growing up always made like a sausage stuffing, a uh, very savory stuffing, which I loved. Yeah. The first, the first See, that's time different. I, I can get down with that. Okay. I can get first, down with that. The first time I had ever eaten Thanksgiving at Lindsay's family's house, who put on a great spread, but they did stuffing a different way. And I just couldn't jam with it was um, Lindsay's dad made the stuffing and he made it with like, was apples, like apples and, and shit, yeah. apples and fucking walnuts. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I was like, what fucking, what planet are we on today? <laughs> this, ain't, this just ain't right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, right. I don't really like that much either. All right. All right. And, so and, 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 and no fucking time at all for green bean casserole either. <laughs> uh, I enjoy that. I do enjoy that. I, I will admit, I know it's low rent. And you know what? Take the cranberry sauce and stick that in your ass while you're oh, at it. Oh, I like, I like the minute. homemade stuff. Yeah. Nah. You, you, no, you don't like the sliced at all? 
Nope. I, I can deal with the slice, but I'd rather have like that gloppy. I like cranberries yeah. a lot, though. I like sour, I and I like um, oh, citrus. Oh, that's right. You don't like yeah. sour. Yeah. yeah. I don't like cranberries. All right, Manster, what do you got? I like the you... band. I like Dolores O'Riordan <laughs> from the Cranberries. Yeah. Hold on. She's dead. She's dead. She did die. Larry, she's oh, dead. That's, she that's did unfortunate. Die. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. I didn't mean Man. to bring us all down. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I like the mashed potatoes and gravy. And definitely my mother's stuffing. It's it's made with all the gizzards and all the neck and all the fucking organs. Whatever she throws in there, I have no idea. Yeah. It's Beef. fucking delicious. Just don't tell me what's in it. Yeah. And and she and she crisps it up, and it, it, I think you'd love it. You'd all love it. It's really delicious, but I don't know what's in it. I stay right, what, I stay away it. from watching her make it. Yeah. What are you running from? Uh, I'm running from turnips, motherfucking yeah. turnips. Just, I don't think anybody ass. even does anybody even make those anymore. Let me step in here for a second. Our our good friends uh, Rich and Jess have us over uh, a lot for Thanksgiving. Um, obviously not in the last few years, but. And Jess, who's a fucking phenomenal cook, and I love all of her food, she always makes mashed turnips. And I had never had a turnip in my life uh, until I tried mashed turnips. And it's, like it's not devil. No, you know what? I'll be honest. I don't like it, but it's almost like, what's the point? There's really not a lot of flavor to it, yeah. right? It, it, to me, it was more just like unflavored mashed potatoes with a looser consistency. Yeah. yeah. Right? Sounds yeah. Weird. It's it, it is weird. It is weird. All right, we're here to talk about a movie, and this is why we're talking about this movie. 1984's Runaway, starring Tom Selleck. Here's the deal. A long time ago, me and Larry were talking about this movie, and we had a laugh about it uh, with, with the templates and Ramsey, and, and you'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> we had a good laugh and said, hey, we should do that at some point. Well, last week, I listened to our good buddy John Peck and his show, Shocking Things. Check it out, Shocking Things. Great show. And he had our buddy Keith Larson on, and they're both huge Kiss fans. And they did an episode all about Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. Um, and in it, they started talking about Gene Simmons' acting career and the fact that uh, after he did uh, Phantom of the Park a few years later, that was a TV movie. A few years later, his feature film debut was Runaway, and uh, and he plays the bad guy in it. And I just said, you know what? This is like a sign. Someone else is talking about Runaway. We got to talk about Runaway. So let's get into it. Runaway. Came out on December 14th of 1984. Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You'll see Runaway. Written and directed by a guy named Michael Crichton. Now, if you're thinking about Michael Crichton in a movie sense, he directed a couple films you might have heard of. One was called Looker with Albert Finney and a movie uh, in the early 70s called Westworld, which uh, has been very recently a very successful HBO show that they just canceled, I guess, the other day. But if you're going to really talk about Michael Crichton. He did five movies, by the way. Directed five. Did he really? I thought it was. Yeah, you want to know the other ones? Yeah. Something called Pursuit, 1972, which I have not heard of. But he directed Coma, which also mm-hmm. had Tom Selleck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and you said Looker, right? Yeah. yeah. So Pursuit and Coma, two other ones. Okay. So if you think about like popular American uh, pop authors of of the last like 30, 40, 50 years, uh, Stephen King is obviously uh, probably the guy most people think of when it comes to that kind of stuff. But when it comes to uh, like the science fiction angle, it's it's Michael Crichton. I mean, yeah. obviously, uh, Andromeda Strain, Sphere, mm-hmm. Congo, and let's not forget this guy fucking wrote Jurassic Park. <clears> um, right. You know, biggest movie of all time, possibly, or, or it's up there. I don't know where it is. Great right. Train Robbery. Yeah, Eaters I mean, Dead Eaters. E-R. Of the dead. E-R, E-R, right? E-R. E-R. Right. Yeah, and my he, show. And he was a doctor, right? Like, or he had a doctor, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yep. So, so this guy was very pro- pro- prolific. Pardon me passed away a few years ago uh manster let's get into the cast who stars in 1984's runaway my god it's full of stars well first we have tom Selleck, the stash as sergeant jack ramsey yeah he's basically a veteran police officer and robotic expert you may remember him from uh simon and simon murder she wrote friends simon and garfunkel Simon and Garfunkel. Did yeah. wait? Did you say Simon, Simon and Simon? Yeah, Simon he played this Schuster. guy named Thomas Magnum. I don't, I'm not sure who that is, but oh, was he? He played him yeah, in. He played Thomas Magnum in Simon and Simon and Murder She Wrote. Oh, probably there was probably like a year where they had the crossovers <laughs> where where Magnum came to the to the to the. Now look, I'll be honest. I've never seen an episode of Magnum PI in my life. I've never seen one. I can tell you who's a super fan who who'd be really disappointed is our our old buddy uh, Sir John. Sir John is like. 
so fucking into Magnum PI. It's, oh, it's really? Hilarious. He's a super oh, fan. Yeah. Huh? Wow. So I, I think that might be the reason John wears Hawaiian shirts all the time. He loves Magnum PI. I've never oh, seen an episode before. I never made before. that connection. Wow. Oh, yeah. John loves Magnum. Um, so, real quick, I wanted to bring this up in research for this movie before I watched it last night. I was looking up different trivia facts for you know for us to spot out, and one of them is is that in this film, Ramsey, his name Ramsey, is said fifty two yeah, times I heard in that. the opening scene, which takes place um, inside of a police office uh, that lasts no more than two and a half minutes. It's said six times. I stopped counting at six <laughs> times. So at that point, I said to myself, "This would be an incredible drinking game. Two things that would kill your liver." I was just saying, if you want to die, if you want to die. You have to drink every time they say Ramsey, and if you want no chance of ever coming back, you also have to drink every time they say the word templates. <laughs> templates, <laughs> templates, <laughs> templates. And if they link the two together, Larry, how would they link the two together? Give me the templates, Ramsey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you get both, you win a car and you die in the car. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Well, next we have Cynthia Rhodes as Officer Karen Thompson. Ramsey's a uh, very enthusiastic new partner. I want her to get me pregnant. <laughs> she, I don't know. Uh, let, let me tell you oh, what else she's done. An attractive see, woman. Yeah. See if you, yeah. See if you see a connection. She's done Xanadu, yep. flash dance, staying alive and dirty dancing. Yep. She well, that's what dancer. she is. She's a dancer. <laughs> she's a dancer. Also, I think this, this might be the only movie she ever did that wasn't dancing related. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Honestly, very possible. Like, Cause she didn't, she didn't act very much longer than this. She retired, you know, as a lot of people smartly do to raise a family. She's like, fuck this. I'm going to get married and married Richard Marks for 25 after dancing years. in one of his videos. I think. Yeah. 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 The don't yeah. mean nothing video, which yeah. funnily enough was after this movie. And in that video, she plays the girl that moves into like the CD apartment complex and yep. her landlord is GW Bailey. Who plays yeah. the oh, police that's chief in this? Funny, I yeah, didn't, I didn't know that. Yep, they well. re, they reunite. Uh, but you're right. This is probably her only like non dancing. Seriously, I recently I sent you a picture. I recently rewatched uh, Staying Alive, uh, yes. which I love. I love. <clears throat> I know it was like critically fucking destroyed as the you know the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, but I love Staying Alive. Yeah. Always have. And uh, she's it's. I don't know if you remember the movie, but it's such a no. sad role. Like Travolta, just like. Like she's like in love with Travolta and like they're kind of dating, but he's basically fucking everybody else right. at this and just completely leading her on. And I'm just like, what a dickhead. What a what dick. A, like he's supposed to be like the, you know, the hero of this movie. And he's just like a fucking raging douchebag. Poor Cynthia Rhodes. Oh, well. Yeah. She's really good looking in, in this movie. Mm, she is. Um, Even for uh, a blonde. I'm not, I don't go for it. Uh, yeah, blonde. I'm not a big blonde fan either. But there's a few is. scenes in this movie where she's wearing like this blue eyeshadow. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it looks great. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Look at yeah. you. Nobody puts Cynthia in a corner. No, nobody does. <laughs> and you know, uh, a couple, a couple other things about her. She was also um, Rosanna in Toto's Rosanna video. So if you ever watched oh, that fuck. video, oh, wow. she I is, didn't know that. Yeah, she is the uh, Rosanna. The, she's, yeah, yep, she's dancing <laughs> around, and and it's her. And then one other weird factoid about her—I don't know if you picked this up, Lloyd—is that in 1989, for one album, only one album, and like only one year, she replaced the female vocalist in that band, and Emotion. Remember Obsession? Oh, remember that he? song? She oh, became sure, the that. new lead singer of that band, and then and then the band dissolved or whatever. So, um, so she had a weird career. She had a weird career. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. Right. Get, I didn't pick up on that. She let that douchebag Robbie knock her up in Dirty Dancing. Yeah. yeah. Oh Whatever. yeah. We have Gene Simmons from Kiss as Doctor Charles Luther, uh, Ramsey, sociopath. That's just <laughs> fucking. I don't know. He developed some kind of technology. I'm not sure for what. Just did he though? Is he? Because like I don't really what, know. What is his deal? <laughs> he, he he just did say he was involved. In yeah. something, and then he wanted to steal it and just sell it on the black. Yeah, because there was a part where the, the other scientists were like, "We fucking did it," and he's like, "Yeah, yeah. you did." Yeah, and now, <laughs> then he's like shooting him. I was like, "Hold yeah. on." So, I, but he's a doctor. So why did he have to get these other two to I make think he this? Was just for a him? fake doctor. Yeah, I don't oh. know what the. Fuck you know what he is? Said. He's the doctor of love. He is. Call <laughs> me Doctor <laughs> Love. Yeah. Call me Doctor Love. I cannot, in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> as I watch this this time, really sink my teeth into why he's the bad guy in this movie. Um, at one point, he, oh, he really? says, "I thought well, he's great." Well, no, he, no, no, no he, he. I don't mean he's bad. I just mean his motives 
are, are oh, so yeah. strange. And yeah, like, that's it, I say. it's hard to understand. It seems like it's a money thing, but yeah. like, I, I no, don't know. It totally is. Cause there's the scene where he's trying to sell the technology yeah. to what I believe are terrorists because he'd mentioned terrorists at one point, the mafia, he says. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think it's all about money, but but he's then really he, happy he to seems, kill people. I was going to say he seems he's really evil and really doesn't mind killing people at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like he didn't give a shit that he, I mean, we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but he didn't care that he was sending, uh, you know, the kid from flight of the navigator down the fucking an elevator <laughs> shaft to get killed by the spiders. <laughs> he's just like, I programmed him Ramsey to kill the next person who comes out. <laughs> you Call can't me stop it, Dr. Love. Yeah. Dr. Love. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, this is going to, this yeah. is going to be a weird one. Strutter. All right. Sorry. <laughs> when I when I was in seventh grade, I was in seventh He's grade. A deuce. I made I made I made, <laughs> I made again. All I right, made right. friends. I made friends with this kid Bobby Easton, who's a big Kiss fan. For his birthday, I bought him. Remember how they used to do like the videotapes of like of bands, and it would be like some of their videos and behind the scenes stuff. I bought him yes, a Kiss yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, and for my birthday, which was like a month or two later, he gave me a bunch of um like like Kiss. Uh, albums that he dubbed like you know like not mixtapes but like kiss albums yeah. and i i had never really listened to kiss until that point in my life i was familiar with them growing up in the 70s but i never really listened other than rock and roll night stuff like that. concert i'll tell you the 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 gene simmons kiss song that i fell in love with and it's such a weird fucking song but from that day when i got that mixtape i don't even can remember I guess? can i guess can i guess that day, i guess yeah god god of thunder no, no, th- because the what I'm saying is it's a weird fucking song. Like God okay. of Thunder makes sense. It's the, there's a guy named the Demon who dri- drips blood and spits fire, and he's playing God of Thunder. That makes sense. What doesn't okay. make sense is a song called Great Expectations. Do you know that oh, song? Jesus. Yes, it's a weird <laughs> I song. I love that song. It's so fucking weird. <laughs> it's like this, like kind of like weird, slow, like not slow, but like like kind of a love song. And the lyric in Great Expectation is uh is uh you see me playing guitar and you know what my fingers can do and you wish you were the yep. one that i was doing it to and then it's got this weird like choral like uh uh chorus it's a fucking bizarre song but i love great expectations yeah, it's, yeah. it's off it's off destroyer all right master who else do we have you know uh one more thing do you know yeah. that, he, that he was hired by Crichton <laughs> just simply because he had that menacing look the only criteria his audition, they said, was he sat down and stared at Crichton for two minutes. Yeah. And Crichton said, <laughs> yeah. you've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> now, all right. I, you know, and I, we're getting probably to when did does do we know when this started filming? Yeah. Oh, yes. Actually, this thing filmed between May and November of 84, which means it, it finished so, like a month before it came out. So let's keep this in mind. So it started in May, right? Kiss didn't unmask until I think it was October 83. Yeah. Right. So Kiss was only unmasked for like six months before Crichton decided that this was his guy. So it's not like yeah. he's been seeing Gene Simmons for years and was like, you know, this guy looks like he could be a good fucking Luther. Like he had just taken the makeup off for the first time five months before. Yeah, I guess, I guess after Phantom of the Park, um, he started taking um, acting lessons in like the early 80s and, and uh-huh. wanted to get really into it. But he knew he couldn't do much with it because of the makeup. Because and, of the makeup, yeah. And he didn't want to be billed as Gene Simmons and have people know that, you know, that it was him. Right. So I, I, I'm assuming, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that he ends up getting fucking the makeup off and then immediately putting, like, his efforts in the movies. Because, I, I, again, credit to John and Keith over at Shocking Things. They were saying that, I guess, like, one of Paul Stanley's big problems in the 80s with Simmons was that there was a big period in the middle 80s where... Like he wasn't involved with the band as much anymore because he was doing like right. his roles. He did yeah. Runaway. He did what was that Trick or Treat? He did uh, yeah. Wanted Dead or Alive. He was doing movies more than he cared hey, about. Hey, don't forget Never Say Die, motherfucker. <laughs> oh fuck, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that watch one. <laughs> party fucking favorite right there. John Stamos and uh, yeah. what was that? Uh, Vanity. Vanity and yeah. Gene Simmons as like the cross dresser, like who wanted I, gotta, to, I never saw that one. Oh, the dude. world of water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh Never Say Die is one of Larry's um watch party movies that we did during the pandemic. Uh, that like that I like that if, one. if like Vinegar Syndrome or someone does that one, I'll pick it up because that was like that was like it was like hard ticket to Hawaii. It was so much fun. Yeah, um, that I wanted crazy. to watch it again. It it's was on crazy. TV a few weeks ago. Like I was just going through, I was like <laughs> 
what? <laughs> this is doing on regular TV. Yeesh. It was there. It was there. All right, we 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 went way off. We, yeah. went, we went off. Well, yeah, there, there's still a whole lot more, but maybe we'll cut it short. We got Kirsty Alley as Jackie Rogers. Um, gosh, she's she's very attractive. She, she is. is, but she ruined Cheers. <laughs> we can talk no, about that later. Yeah, yes, yes, she did. Yes, she I, did. I, I I know what you're referring to, Manster, and I found yeah. that to be such an awkward. It's so scene. weird. <laughs> where, where, I got where, a lot of quotes from this movie, and uh, that's yeah. one of them. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you to just jump ahead so I don't forget it. The quote that made my wife the most crazy as I watched this movie was the last scene in the movie. Selleck's character and uh, Cynthia Rhodes' character are finally getting together, and uh, and she he just looks at her and says, "Can you cook?" Yeah, and my wife yeah. is like, "Try me, right. yeah, <laughs> fucking asshole, Selleck, yeah, yeah. Man, oh, douche man. lord, yeah." So uh, she plays Jackie Rogers, Luther's former lover, basically double crossed him, stole some templates, and wants to sell them herself. And Kirsty, uh, yeah, she's from Star Trek II: Wrath of Khan, Summer School. Look who's talking. Yeah, Summer School. That's a great fucking. Summer movie. School is great. Yeah, it really is. Uh, then we have Stan Shaw as Sergeant Marvin James. Classic. Classic. Eighties. Classic he was. Actor. Uh, most people probably don't know, but he was uh, the Big Dipper in Rocky. He was. He was the guy that Mickey gave Rocky's locker to. Yep. Oh, when, yep. when he got yep. kicked out. Hey, Rock. Like your locker, man. Tough and fast. And what more can you need? Oh, yeah. right. I yeah, always I think I dig your locker, man. Yeah. <laughs> I always think of um, Stan Shaw as uh, Ice Pirates. Not me. You know. You know what he is for me. He was uh, Dennis Quaid's friend in Tough Enough. Oh, that that's was right. Tough Enough. That was my uh, Stan shit. Shaw. I don't even remember know what that, that movie. movie. Is no. Oh, dude, Tough Enough. It's like a um, boxing movie. movie. Yeah, and that wasn't boxing. It was like the what do they call that? Um, the oh, bare, tough bare guy. No, like tough guy contests. Remember those? Okay. Like when yeah, those yeah. were a thing. It's basically a big tough guy contest. Dennis Quaid is like a wannabe country singer, and like he needs like ten grand to make a record, and like joins this tough man contest. And Stan <laughs> Shaw is like training him. It's such a bizarre premise, but I always loved the movie I, as a kid. I pride myself on knowing. If I don't haven't seen it, I know about stuff. Yeah, I don't know that at all. Love uh, this movie. All right, I'm gonna look that up. Tough enough. Yeah, look, look it up. Uh, then you have, I think you already said, G.W. Bailey <laughs> as uh, chief of police, uh, Lieutenant Harris. Like, yeah, <laughs> Lieutenant Doctor. Chad Harris and all the police academy movies. He was in Mash, <laughs> Sergeant Rizzo. I I, w- I waited for him and Proctor to end up in the uh, <laughs> what was it, the Blue Oyster, Larry? Yeah. <laughs> Brunt. Dun, dun. <laughs> Never happened. <laughs> then we got uh, Joey Kramer as Bobby Ramsey. Uh, that's the little boy who from Flight of the Navigator. Great fucking movie. Yeah, love Flight of the Navigator. You know what? He's fucking this movie. He's though. annoying, but I think he's good in this. I think he plays. He, he's, he does a good job. He's a little boy, and that's yeah. come he, hang out with Owen, bro. Yeah. I want to ask you 714 questions in yep. six minutes. Like, that's just what they do. Like, and he plays it perfectly. Just like question after question. You're like, shut the fuck up. Dude. You know, you know what he made me mad was at the end of the movie, uh, when we're in our final, like, you know, battle and he goes on the elevator and, you know, sell it, you know, uh, Ramsey puts him on the elevator to, to save him. And then Gene Simmons is like, psych motherfucker. Once yeah. he gets to the bottom, he's gonna get killed. And, and then Ramsey's like, uh, what's his name? Jimmy, Timmy. Timmy, Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> shut the elevator off. Now yeah. this is your dad Press telling the button. you. Press the button. He goes, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, <laughs> if I was his dad, I'd be like, "I'm gonna beat your fucking head <laughs> off." What's wrong? Don't you remember a guy just had a gun to your head, you little shit? What's the matter? Don't you remember the bass player from Kiss was just about to shoot you? The, the guy that fucking the recorded Great Expectations was gonna fucking yeah. put a smart bullet through your asshole, idiot. Remember the guy with, and it wasn't a love gun. Yeah, but you no, can dodge those smart bullets, out. no problem. You pull the trigger of my. <laughs> yeah, let, let's let's talk about the smart bullet in a few minutes. Yeah, because uh, I have a lot of questions right. about the technology. Yeah, we we got a few more people. Uh, I'll go through them quick. Chris Mulkey as David Johnson, not not the. Uh, Running back who used no. to be good and now he's terrible. Uh, but he plays the father of the baby in that house and, and involved with the whole. <laughs> he, he runs from the scene. crime scene. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He acted so poorly in that scene. Yeah, you think that was his direction? Was I, I want you to look really suspicious? I think so because Chris I, Mulkey. I just thought it was just absolutely terrible acting. Chris Mulkey, who's in a ton of things, is not a bad yeah. actor. Yeah, right. He is young, 
So maybe he had, he wasn't there yet, maybe but he's not, not a bad there, actor. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff this guy's been in. Tons of stuff. Oh, yeah. Cloverfield, 24, Friday Night Lights. That was a great show. Did you ever watch that TV show? No. I, it was one of those ones I, I meant to get around to, and then once it got to like yeah. season like six, I was like, that that's too much. Justified. Uh, moving on, we have Sullivan Walker as KC. You're in the, the weeds now. Who the fuck I'm is in KC? The weed. Yeah, I'm in the You're weeds. You're in the weeds. He was... Who the fuck uh, is KC? He's... Uh, he was he was the guy that sold Gene Simmons the coffee on the on, yeah. uh, from the Roach Coach. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll do one more shout out. Uh, Marilyn Schreffler as the oh, voice of God. Lois. Thank God. You got to throw her in there. She well, she did a billion cartoons in the eighties. She was a big cartoon uh, cartoon voice. Yeah. yeah, she's she's a fucking cartoon, all right. <laughs> all right, let's get into the movie. So the idea of this is this is essentially uh, Tom Selleck's Blade Runner. Um, where it, <laughs> yeah. Michael Crichton described this movie, even though it is uh, very uh, heavy on the technology and it's yeah. obviously a, a science fiction e. He said he did not think of this as a science fiction film. He felt like it was a cop film first that was mm. supplemented by technology. And he said, if you were to ask me what year this takes place in, I'd say it's a year ahead of what what we're in now, <laughs> yes. which is fucking insane. Yeah, that was. Static. I figured it out. Yeah, they said like 91, 1991. Yeah, so there's, and we'll fast forward. There's the scene when uh, Gene Simmons is in the, uh, he sneaks into the police department, which I love because it's not like they don't have pictures of him by now. Right. Nobody fucking stops this guy. Yeah. He doesn't, I mean, he just looks evil, right? Like, and Friends, nobody thinks, he, and he just goes into the fucking office and he types in fucking uh, Tom Selleck's shit. And it's, I wrote it down. <laughs> and that's actually what he wrote. I saw it. It Tom said Selleck's that he was fit. born in 1956 and he was age 35. So that would right. make it 1992 or one, one or two, okay. 1991 or 1992. It, did at any point, cause it came up earlier in the movie too, twice that he was 35. Did that hurt you in your soul a little bit? Like, cause I, I don't know. I just, I, what that I'm like 15 years older than Tom Selleck in that fucking, you ever have that moment? Like I, I know I'm for, I have it all the time. I know yeah. I'm a 47 year old man. I know that. I know I look like a 47 year old man. I know that, but there's something in my brain that can't equate that Tom Selleck is 35 in this movie. And I'm 12 years older than he is in this movie. Like when I look at it and it's partially because I don't think I'm a real, I don't think I'm a real adult. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Tom, yeah. look, this guy's a cop. He's working on the robot division. I fucking collect comic books and have a podcast. Like, what's <laughs> fucking wrong? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, well, that's the, that keeps you young, John. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Hell, I, I watch TV and like the only sportscaster that I'm older than or that I'm younger than is like Chris Collinsworth. Do you ever do you ever watch an NFL game and realize that all the players were born like yeah. oh, 20 yeah. years after you at the very yeah. least? It's fucking insane. Yeah. It's absolute fucking insanity. Oh, yeah. All right. So night. So 1991, we could say, um, and the and the idea behind it is is Tom Selleck works for a division of the LAPD called the Runaway Division. Com robots, computers, uh, automation is uh, very heavily used in the society, and every once in a while, one it doesn't of them, seem to work very it, well. It, none of it works. None of none That's of it works. So bizarre. None of it works. This movie, until we get into the actual kind of like templates and luther plot yeah. seems like it's just us following them on, on a bunch of of uh, of yeah. calls to go uh first they go and they stop a uh a, a agricultural robot and then oh, there's God. a robot yeah, right. uh, that, that is zany the best scene in the whole chase movie. through the fucking corn yeah yeah like it was there's... zany like it needed like looney tune sounds behind it like woo, woo, woo. i'm like I, they did have some running back sounds. and forth through the fucking corn i'm like what what is happening? Not right to now? mention all the farmers and all their comments. Did you hear all that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They could they come in on the on the helicopter. That's, that's what it, we're paying you for, boy. Yeah, they're like, sure took you long enough to get here. <laughs> like Holy it came shit. by helicopter. So his job in the runaway division is to find these uh, malfunctioning robots and to to fix them or or stop them from possibly hurting someone, whatever the deal is. So there's your general idea. It's the first day for uh, for the Cynthia Rhodes character. And she comes in, and she's just been transferred over from another, another division. Did you guys notice? Let me ask the you this: division. Did you? Yeah, the, the the hot chick division. Did you guys notice that every time they're in the office, she's wearing a skirt, and every time they go out to to a um a run, she's wearing long pants. And it just makes yeah. me think: just wear mm. long pants all the time. Like she literally has to stop before they leave to put long <laughs> pants on, change into pants, and then when they get back, she's always in. And I'm sure, listen, it's, listen yeah. she's got great stems. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's got legs Great. up to here. I get yeah, it. I'm she's not got some good gams. She's right. a dancer. She's a fucking dancer. <laughs> you got to show her legs off. See, you see the stems on that one? <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put a dance scene in this movie, frankly. Yeah. Well, well they she did that. mention, she goes, I used to be a dancer, but I got bad she knees. Did. She, she did. She did say that. It was like, fuck, they got to just... pull it in. That was yeah. for all the Cynthia Road mega fans back then. <laughs> that, was, that was a little Easter egg for them. <laughs> Which is weird because this was pre-Dirty Dancing. So I yes. guess Staying Alive was a big movie. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, oh, so, so was Flash Dance, of course. So, okay. So they, they go out and they, they stop this agricultural robot. And it's like it's like the meet cute where we're going we're gonna to learn about each other. Did either of you guys feel like she was super aggressive about getting to know about him mm-hmm. and just everything involved with him. Larry, did you feel like, like, cause she's like, is he married? It, she's asking everybody all these questions. And then she gets like weirdly kind of jealous when he talks on the phone to someone named Lois. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Which we find out Lois is his home Lois robot. Right. But like, she just seems really like into him from fucking moment one. Is that cause he's yeah. Tom Selleck or is, is this chick have issues? I, well, I mean, in reality, I think she has issues, but it, it's the movie. It's because it's Selleck. Selleck's, you know, a heartthrob, so they got to yeah. sell it. They're selling it hard. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's an 80s thing. And I, I think uh, you're right, Lloyd. I, th- I think yeah. it's like it's like we have to we can't just be yeah, like, um, yeah, you the, can't the women have believe, to be interested in a man. Yeah, just, you can't be. possibly believe that a woman would not be interested right. in Tom Selleck. So right. exactly. that's how right. they have to write it. So in the very first scene in a helicopter monster, we learn something incredibly important about Tom <laughs> Selleck's character that's brought up 19 other times in the movie and plays a big part in it. What yeah, is his uh, deal? Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So he looks over the side at the, this zigzagging uh, line through the corn and you could clearly see that he's a little queasy and he doesn't want to look over there. So he's got some vertigo. He's got some vertigo going on and she picks up on it right away, you know. She She's picks up on it. Em- em- empathic woman. She sees. She goes right back to the office and immediately asks the Stan Shaw character, "What the fuck's right. up with this dude?" Yeah. And we find out that his and Stan his fear- just unloads all his fucking business on right, him. everything. Totally yep. doesn't yeah. even just say, "You know what? You'll have to ask him." He's like, yep. "Look, girl, listen. <laughs> uh, yeah. A couple years ago, Jack was chasing down a bad guy. They the bad guy got up you know high somewhere, and his vertigo stopped him from following him. Uncle Ben time." Uh, he doesn't stop the guy, and the guy murders fucking you know. Um, <laughs> right, here we go. Six people, right? So, just, so Jack Ramsey either becomes Spider Man or is now like but they don't ever even delve into that either. Like, right? They, they never like get to that. Like, like he seems to have like this weight on him, you know. Mm-hmm. And then they immediately get the call, right? What they say? It's a five oh nine. She's like, "What's that?" Oh, there's dead people. Dead people. <laughs> so they go to a house, Larry, right? And yep. we find out. That this uh this kind of boxy little house yeah. droid. It's like a toolbox. Yeah, it's sort of a toolbox. Yeah, every droid around this. the house stabbing people. Like yeah. like they get there and the cop. <laughs> like I think the cops can't do anything apparently if it's a robot no. unless right. Tom Selleck arrives. Uh, because all probably... you need to defeat these robots is a heavy blanket or maybe Basically. a stick. A stick. Yeah. <laughs> so cops like, yep, that fucker's already sliced up two people. Here they are, just laying on the neighbor's yard. We yeah. left them here for you to look at. Yeah. Why would he need to look at it? Like the only way. Like, look, I understand if you're talking about like a robot, like in say, like um that Will Smith movie, I I Robot or something, where they were very yeah. much like people and they can move around. The only way that little toolbox robot could stab you to death is in your sleep. <laughs> So they didn't say it. I wish yeah. they had said that. Like they were After sleeping. After he drugged you first. Right. First, it gave you an intravenous drug. Then it just stabbed the fuck out of you. But then yeah. we get did told it, that. Did it stab them in the fucking ankle? Yeah, I don't know. They, well, like, I don't know. Laying in their bed. I, in I the face? They, in the face. Remember they looked at it. They, what, was, what was the tool? Oh, the oh, so yeah, yeah. But how? So now we find out that there's an infant baby in the house alone with this robot. Yeah. And then all of a sudden gunshots happen. And now we found out there's a robot. So Tom Selleck is like, I'm going to put on my laser gear shit from 1987, <laughs> right? It, he looks like he puts on this like mesh looking suit that's supposed to kind of like be some kind of like a dampening grid. And then he gets a little his, like uh, laser gun. That's the, God, that's the God of Thunder suit. Is that the God yeah. of Thunder suit? That's so, and he goes in the house and he's like, I'm going in, right? First thing though, they send in, you got to give oh, credit. So, drones. Yeah, the drone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. in this movie, we get drones. Yep. Right, which is obviously in 1984 not a thing. You we get tablets. we get tablet computers. We see like um, on on Bobby's um, desk before he goes to bed. There's like a, a laptop 
at one point. Yeah. Um, Did you get Wi-Fi or, or wireless like headphones or something? They had, they had wireless communication. Yeah. And uh, also, um, I mean, I guess this is like maybe reaching a little bit. But like when they look up stuff on each other, it's got like your likes and dislikes, and like you're into sports, yeah, like yes, social like, media. Like social media. Yeah. Yep. They also yeah. had um, they had uh, retinal identification. Yep. Yeah. They, there was a lot of they got a lot of shit right. They got a yeah, lot of it that's going Michael on. Michael Crichton for you. He got some stuff right. He yeah. he definitely was a smart dude. So um, so uh, Ramsey goes into the house and uh, he starts to do all these barrel rolls and shit, and he's avoiding the robot. <laughs> did either one of you did either one of you i mean i've seen this movie before he did left kind. left right back <laughs> did, did you did you laugh though when you saw the dumb like robot arm holding the, the six shooter oh, like of course. it was just yeah. it was just, all like, shaky shaky yeah. it didn't uh, look like it could aim at you but there's a news crew outside and that the news robot crew, shot that fucking gun that would have blown the robot back like fucking right, four right, feet. right. right. Hold that. so so the news crew guy comes in with the camera and ramsey's like Shut oh that, that right was off. great the fucking robot blasts this dude in half and uh, and finally, just as the robot looks like it's about to fucking murder a ten month old, Ramsey does mm. a fucking Kirk roll and you know springs up and shoots it with his little laser gun and saves the day. So it's, it's a lot of excitement. Now we find out that the guy that lived in the house was one of the <laughs> computer engineers, right? right and right. as we as they bring the robot back to Stan Shaw, who's kind of like the mechanic. But wasn't he, that the, the father of the baby and the husband? He was. It was. It he didn't was. give a shit about his family being gone. No, because he's fra- he's afraid of Luther. Yeah. Fuck yeah. it. Fuck that 10 month. I got I got I got I got the <laughs> God of Thunder. <laughs> and Luther I, was there. Was that the first time we saw Luther? Luther, yeah, the... just he walks like up and he just stares. That's all he does, like in this movie. He stares, he stares at everybody. Yeah. Uh Luther walks up and stares. So when we get the robot back to Stan Shaw's character, who's like kind of like the tech guy in, in the department. What does he find, Manster, in it that uh, that's very a very I guess um, interest to him? Well, he he finds a chip that is definitely not regulation because it's got this bright red, got a stripe red stripe to make it stand out. <laughs> he says that he's like, this has got a red stripe on it. This is a regulation, yeah, and not the beer, and not the beer. No, Just, not the great Jamaican right, not beer. Red stripe, no. <laughs> and then if you're making something inconspicuous. You definitely would put a red stripe on it. As they're messing around with the chip. The um the chip explodes. Yeah, and I actually like this scene a lot. Like, what did we, they call it? They said something. They they gave it a certain name when it was about to explode. I he he starts to pull the chip out, and then they realize it's going to go. So, I think Stan Shaw and uh, and and the Cynthia Rose character and Ramsey they all hit the deck, and then it blows up. And then from the outside of the office, we see GW Bailey. He just looks at it and goes, "Assholes!" Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I laughed at that moment. So so now we're on the hunt. For the chips and we're on the hunt eventually for the templates so the idea is is that the david johnson character who's the father of the temple and the old that he said fuck this kid to and ran and mm-hmm. another uh scientist are in league with dr Ch- luther right and that's that's gene simmons and they've created these these chips that if you install it into uh, none of the actual tech in this movie kind of makes sense so if you install it into a robot it, it becomes murderous i think is the idea is that what happens here? I, I think I, I think that's what it is. And that's what it seems like. But it can identify certain humans. Yeah. Well, I know this, how this that's was also. In, but. It's like or somewhere around this part is also where Selick finds out about Luther for the first time because they get right. like video <clears throat> because they got basically the ring doorbell right too. That's yeah. another right. Thing. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. They, they he's looking at video and he's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" And it's like, "Hey, I'm here to check on your <laughs> malfunctioning <laughs> fucking." Right you know robot and they're and like he's like max headroom he's like i want to i want to talk to that guy because it was like partially erased or something like that so that was the first time Selleck found out about luther yeah. well, apparently no, didn't have a criminal record and had just been nobody knew who he was until he started a, killing people no he had a criminal right. record but still nobody yeah nothing big they just they, they say he's an asshole rich kid with a like, like this character is i mean he's menacing but there's really not a lot to him. Part, part one is he wants these these chips and he wants the templates to make more. He takes the the chips from one of the uh, the guys at the Vectortron place or whatever it's called and kills him, and yep. then he goes after David Johnson. Yeah, the cops. What did he say to that guy first? Do you want your money? No, he said like, something. Like the the guy says something. These are these are very uh, 
he says some. These are very like important. He goes, "Yes, that's why they're so expensive." Yeah. And, well, and he uh, just, well, he tells the guy straight out. Years. Yeah. What are you going to do with them? He's like, "I'm going to sell them to the fucking Iranians." Yeah. He's like, "You know, I'm going to sell them to fucking you know, to anybody that wants them." So he goes after David Johnson. The cops get a hold of Johnson and are trying to hold him up, but you can't hide from a smart bullet, right? And we find out that Luther has a gun. Now, here's something funny about the... Luther um, has a gun. He does. Here's something funny about all of the posters of this film is that Luther has a very specific gun that he uses in this movie. In the posters for the movie, Tom uh, Tom Selleck's holding it. Right. He never uses it. Never fires it. Yeah. Never fires it. Luther chases David Johnson into an alleyway along with uh, with uh, Karen Magnum. And, and Magnum P.I., oh, yeah. and he takes a shot. And as he takes a shot, I'm going to use one of our good friends, Eric, uh, uh, hot coffee lawsuit, one of our pint insiders, his words for this. So when, when I put up that we were doing this, Eric said, this movie has it all Toto, uh, Rosanna. Um, it's cut Kirsty alley before she found out what a carb was. <laughs> um, and then the third thing he said was evil dead bullets because right. that's, that's what we get. All the basically time. what it is. Yeah. Is it's an evil dead style, uh, like shot where the bullet is chasing people around now yeah, with a crazy noise. With, yeah. <laughs> like a whirring noise. Yeah. And they say that it's, they figure it out eventually that it's heat seeking, but yep. it's not just machinery heat. It's somehow yeah. patterned to your specific body heat. Yes. But then they throw that idea out. Cause it goes right by other people in the first scene that it's used when it's shot after David Johnson, it does not hit magnum or karen it no, goes around no. everybody until it finally gets him after going around corners and shit and kills him by the end of the movie in the final battle he shoots five of these at selic and selic just dives and dodges them yeah he just dives why are they not going behind tables shit? yeah because yeah. it's tom selic yeah you can't kill tom selic and the tom selic not movie. when you got a mustache not when you have a mustache like that right God, it's impenetrable it. mustache yeah there's uh. no way no At one point, chance. he gets he gets shot at in like an outdoor restaurant, and he hides behind yeah. a fucking table, and yeah, the right. bullet just bounces off of it. <laughs> it's, just it's, it's, it. it's so weird. Uh, I do want to mention one other thing. Uh, eventually, we find out too that Luther has another really cool weapon that probably nine out of ten people who know what Runaway is think about these when they think about Runaway is these metallic spiders, spider right? That, like little little spider drones that are murderous, and they have like a needle that pops out of the front and <laughs> they say it um, that the, they're filled with acid, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they also randomly explode. I, yeah. I can't, the armament on this, on these machines is so confusing. There's a couple cool shots. Um, there's a shot later in the movie in a bathroom that I thought was great. I don't know if you guys thought this was cool too, where there is in the, um, stall. the in the stall, there's like the hot yeah. librarian cop. Who's like the CSI cop that, uh, that he runs into a couple times for the movie. Yeah. Tom Selleck's character, and she's trying to find like evidence in a bathroom stall, and one of these um spiders, like uh, like you know, gets gets the fucking drop on her, and it jumps on her, and then it, like kind of injects her with the acid, but then also explodes, and it's kind <laughs> of an outside shot where another cop is trying to save her, and it's really cool, like a lot of fire and stuff. In the end, when he's fighting them off on the elevator, he's knocking right. them off, and they're just blowing up left and right. They're blowing up. Yeah. They got his face, so you got a little acid face there. Okay, but then cool. after they after they inject Luther, they don't blow up for like five no, minutes. It takes right. like five minutes, right? Yeah, they, they, have to wait, they have to wait for the you know the final scare before they can mm -hmm. essentially blow up. And, and also, I mean, I know we're I know we're kind of all over the place, but like at one point in the final battle, Selleck's character gets a blast of acid on each side of his face. Yeah, he's and he's cheap. fine. He's fine. He has right. like a cut and his face is black. It's, it's like charred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Acid would not do that. It would be much worse. But then oh. when she goes to kiss him, it, it's almost like he has soot. Yeah. Because it wipes off on her nose. Yeah. Oh, and then he, he, he gives her a little sooty. boop on the nose. Yeah. He gives her a little <laughs> boop on the nose and says, yeah. can you cook? <laughs> no. Um, so we, the technology in this movie is is ahead of its time, but it's also it, very 1984. Very questionable. Um, yeah. Lois, the uh, Tom Selleck's house droid essentially looks like kind of like a shittier version of Pauly's robot from Rocky four, right? They're like it's, it's boxes. Very, they're just all square boxes. It yeah. looked to me like a, a stereo I would have bought in 1989. Like, yeah. like a stereo. Lois, Lois could have used a push off a cliff. Yeah. Do you know? She was, she was fucking annoying too. Wasn't that other one called the Sentinel? 
Remember back in the scene we talked about where uh, he was getting the the uh, templates. Yes. From the other dude, and they saw the robot go by the window, the door. And I well, no, no. He says a century. Oh, century. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a cent- right, century's mind. passing by. I can't talk right now. All right, century. All right, I thought it was Sentinel, like which was a totally odd name for that tiny little robot. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's jump ahead a little bit. So now, now we're uh, we're on the the prowl for Luther. We get a we get a scene where uh, now Tom Selleck is not a human cop. He's not like a a, a human criminal cop. He's a, he's a robotics guy, but he's just breaking all the rules left and right. He gets a, a little bit of a, a info that Luther is going to be. Uh, doing a deal with some fucking I don't know Al Qaeda or something, and and the mafia and uh, a couple hookers because that's you, yeah. know, you always have the hookers there too. Mm-hmm. We get titties for no like, yeah. just odd out just of the blue. Out of the blue, we get a set of hooker titties because it's nineteen eighties and it's PG thirteen, and that's they, what you have to do. Somebody said it's PG like this movie was totally shot, and then someone said, "Hey, Michael Crichton, do you know that in a PG thirteen movie you can get one set of titties in it?" And he said, "I'm calling everybody back for reshoots. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get some hooker titties in this thing." Yeah. So you get they some were hooker nice. titties. They were good titties. Good titties. Yeah. But like, just so weird that none of the rest of this movie right. ever went to titty. And they have this kind of like shootout again. We have another cool use of a drone. Um. And and Karen gets shot in the arm. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and this is where we get Tom Selleck's Oscar reel scene when he yells at them to clear the room out. Did you guys notice, Larry? He's I don't so know. abruptly like shouty at people. Thank you. I was just going to ask Larry that, right. but I'm going to I'm just going to say you're 100 percent right. He yells at everybody yeah. in this fucking movie, <laughs> and he's he, and he swears for what sounds like the first time in his life. It, right. it, it sounded was. like he it, had like never he's trying it out. Like he's yeah, trying out it swearing. sounded like he had never. Get the f- fuck out fuck of here! Out? <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, he's never sworn before, has he? I, I have good, a feeling. Good for you, little guy. <laughs> I have a feeling that some like sixty-nine-year-old, like Magnum loving, like older couple, oh, right. went to go see this in nineteen eighty-four because it was their boy. And and as soon as he screams, like, get out of the fucking room! Right. They went, Harold, right. get the car. First Richard Dawson, and now Tom Selleck. Oh, <laughs> we should God. we should have seen the last Starfighter. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so she gets shot, and uh, the bullets are explosive, so they can't move her. Right, they're gonna try to move her. Now, if you are, if you have a fetish and your fetish is sweaty, injured Cynthia Rhodes, this scene is for you oh, yeah. because she, because Selleck goes in, Ramsey goes in and he has to take the bullet out of her arm and it's like a little surgery scene. He takes care of her and we get a little bit more of the bonding. We meet the Jackie character, the Kirstie Alley character um, around the same time, a little bit after, I think. She How do is, we meet her? I don't remember where she came from. She is stuck. She's in the, in the office. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay. And Sorry that that sentry yeah. droid is it's like just zapping, zapping her. her. Right. right. <laughs> and and that's the yeah. scene where when they're talking to the security <clears throat> guard and they bring her, they you see her at first. Tom Selleck, uh, Ramsey, a professional police officer, looks at the security guard and goes, "Man, she's attractive, huh? Yeah, just yeah. just so random." And, and the like, security wow. guard's like, "Yep, oh, she's very oh, attractive." Fuck yeah! I'm Super like, "What's attractive. happening?" Like, yeah. Even Cynthia Rhodes is like, what's happening right now? <laughs> Cynthia Rhodes right, is right. like, the, the, uh, she probably started an HR department based on that comment. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so he seems to be enamored with her, and we find out that she's kind of like, it, they don't really ever say it, but she seems to be Luther's girlfriend, but she's afraid of Luther. She's got the templates, and she's going to try to to use them herself. And then we move into this action scene where they're going to go in two separate police cars, Lloyd. Explain the scene uh because it's kind of odd but like there's auto there's an automated police car and then they're trying to get her safely out of the out of the um police precinct yeah they're they're trying to get her out of there like cynthia or or officer thompson is driving one car and they're in the other car and all these little drone or what would you call those little things not they were like they were like little land drones lock-ons lock Lock on. there you go yeah yeah lock on we got a lock on yeah, a whole bunch of them, but they keep, you know, they got those little uh, turrets on the top of the car, zapping, zapping, zapping them all. Uh, and then... Um, did did and we then, at any point realize that this Luther was had guys oh, You know what, this him? was after they scanned Kirstie Alley yeah, and totally. found like 16 bugs on her. See, the whole idea with everybody is they're afraid of Luther because Luther is such a genius and he knows how to find out where you are. And she's like, right. he's going to find me and kill me. Yeah. 
I don't have any bugs on me. And she does not think she has bugs on her. Right. But they, they do this whole scan thing and there's one in her bra. There's one. So we get this kind of like scene where we think for a second that Kirstie Alley is going to get undressed. Right. She doesn't really. But we do see her back and she looks like that Luther might like, I don't know, so, hit her with a baseball bat or something. Something's yeah. happening there. She's definitely She's gotten a beating. She's gotten a beating for sure. Yep. Um, but she grabs her handbag and goes back. Uh, you know, they never scanned her handbag. Right. And, but she and, knew it because she's like tapping on it, like nervously. Like she mm, knew that that's where the bug was. Yeah. Right? Well, she had the templates in there, right? And she, she no, because she took, she took, yeah, but she took the templates out and then threw the purse. Oh, uh, okay. She knew yeah. that her purse was bugged. So they're in the cars and there's this whole drones coming after them, like land lock ons coming after them. And Cynthia Rhodes' character is using her her telescopic mounted laser yeah. to blast them away. It's blasting left and right. It's the first time in the movie and the only time in the movie that we are kind of clued into the fact that Luther has people working for him. Those two guys yeah. in the car, we never see or hear from them again. They, they end up getting away. There's a little bit of a harrowing. They got to jump from one car to another. Um, and, uh, and the drones are under the uh, impression, I guess, that they die. Uh, and uh, as well as, uh, you think that, right? But then the very next scene, they go to this outdoor restaurant Right. To kind of like show off that they have Kirstie Alley's character to draw Luther out. Now, I have a question about this restaurant that confuses the fuck out of me. Yeah. Selleck's character, Ramsey and Jackie, Kirstie, uh, Kirstie Alley's character, are seen at the beginning standing at this like robotic she, like sushi, sushi thing. Bar. Oh, yeah. and it's it's very oh we can make a sushi. It's yeah. very it's very <laughs> much it's like, problematic. It's problematic, right? Yeah. And they order sushi at, at this at this point. He says we'll have a couple California rolls. And as they're standing there talking, those are good. A couple of sushi, you know, platters come out, and then they realize, oh, uh, they got communication in uh, in the ear. Ramsey gets one that Luther is in, you know, in the restaurant where they're standing. It's it's outdoor restaurant, and he's got he's got Karen, but uh, you know, at gunpoint, uh, we're going to do a trade off. But then they get seated by a Mater D. Yeah, I don't understand this restaurant. You you order your food, and they it serves to you by robot, and then a Mater I, D sits you down. Like who? Why didn't they grab their food? It's Uber. very confusing. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was not yeah, the only one. I was confused. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah. I don't. Maybe that's like an appetizer. Like, and it's like, you know how sometimes you go to a restaurant, you order a drink at the bar first, and then you're mm. seated. Like maybe you in 1992, he thought you would get your appetizer first and then go be seated. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. If yeah. it was, I, I get what you're saying. It's a bold like, prediction, Larry. If it was like prediction. one slider, it would make sense, but it was like 16 rolls. Like it was right. a lot of, so you're gonna, you're, and then each, each one of them had 16. So the two of them are going to eat 32 rolls yeah, 32 then rolls. sit down and have a fucking, like a large pizza. Right, then have a meal. <laughs> I don't What's know. happening in this restaurant? <laughs> it's a weird restaurant. It's also outside. It know, is outside. outside. Yeah. yeah, near a pool. It, the whole thing is <laughs> weird, right? The whole yeah. thing is weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Their seats are near a pool <laughs> That's at right. the restaurant outside, where you ordered your food from uh, the Asian uh, robot and then went and sat down. Right. It's like oh. the pool. At you 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 wreck a sushi? Oh, I'm like, I was yeah. cringing. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? What the yeah. fuck, Michael Crichton? The, the guy, by the way, who wrote Rising Sun. Um, so yeah, so they have this whole thing where they're sitting several tables away from each other, and and uh and at one point Luther's like, you know, what do you think? I am an asshole. We're gonna do this trade-off at the same time. And okay, you give me Karen, I'm gonna give you Jackie. Um, Jackie takes the templates out and tears like them in half, like tears the amount in half. And gives uh, Selleck half the templates and says, right. my insurance policy. Insurance, yeah. She walks over. Karen walks over. And as soon as she gets over, you know, uh, uh, Simmons uh, uh, pulls her in for a nice hot kiss. And then what does he do to her, Larry? Oh, dude, it's actually a great scene. It's a fucking, yeah. it's pretty brutal. He fucking takes a stiletto out and just fucking sticks that knife right, like, under the base of her skull on the back yeah. of her neck. Ugh. Yeah, totally fucking. It's yeah, he, scene. he's covered in blood. And she's, then she's dead right away. Like these aren't all the templates, Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> There's 32 templates. These are 16. What do you like think I'm sushi. stupid? These so are he... crazy, crazy nights, Ramsey. <laughs> 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 so he pulls out his fucking he pulls out his fucking gat and he starts blasting. And this yeah. is where we have like another s semblance of how is this the same gun from the 
David Johnson scene where it's right. going around corners and shit. And here, like fucking wooden tables are stopping these yeah. bullets. You just um, can hide behind a table, no problem. Hide behind a table, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have they have he a jumped her in the pool too, right? He, he dumps her body in the pool yeah, and then he, he jumps. In the pool. He Convenient. jumps off of like a little waterfall type thing they have. Uh, and yeah, and then I don't then, know where the waterfall came from. Right. Well, here's one of my favorite parts of the movie is he jumps off, he lands, he's all wet. He runs off into like kind of like it's not the woods, but it's a wooded area. And the yeah. two cops, Ramsey and, and Karen, come out and they literally just like take five steps and look around and they're like, he's gone. <laughs> he's standing. <laughs> yep. They show him. He's standing 12 feet away from them in this like wooded area, just staring at them. Just breathing hard. Like just breathing just hard. Breathing right? hard. <laughs> he's a little winded. He's a little winded. It's like it's like at the end, oh, he's, he's a little yep. winded, like it's like at the encore yeah. of a kiss concert. So uh, we skip ahead a little bit. Right. We find out that uh, Luther has penetrated the police station and he now has gotten through social media, through through OG MySpace um, yeah. or Prodigy or something. He got um, <laughs> all of Ramsey's information, right? He knows that he's got a son named Bobby. He knows that he lives alone. He's like, how the fuck is this guy 35? <laughs> um, he <laughs> sees all of that, right? And yeah. he so calls uh, Ramsey at the police station is like, I'm going to kill your kid. Uh, you got to meet me uh, at this place. Another scene I thought was weird. So Ramsey and Karen go back to Ramsey's apartment. The apartment's like all messed up. And Lois, the robot is knocked over yeah. and like pretty destroyed. And mm-hmm. Bobby is gone. So they go in, they get Lois turned on just enough to say, uh, 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 you know, it's an unpleasant man came in and took Bobby. Your son has now been kidnapped by this guy. Got to fix the robot. Like a, he fixes gotta, the robot. Yeah. Got to fix the robot. <laughs> he fixes- you know how much that fucking thing probably costs? I know. That was probably. Well, not I think a he loves robot. Lois. I think he loves. Dude, her. I I understand. I mean, he had mentioned that. at one point that it was like the newest model. Like, yeah, that, a it's a twelve. It's, it's not a ten. It's, it's not a ten. Series that, twelve. That's a twelve, dude. The, like, yeah. you got to fix that robot. Buggy. We all know the tens were lemons. Yeah. The twelves yeah. are where it's at. Yeah. If that if Dude. Lois was a ten, he probably would have gone to get his son. Right. But his Lois son. is a twelve. You gotta you gotta spend a little time you, and work you on Lois. Put some effort there. Yeah. His son is yeah. very possibly having his throat slit by yeah. the guy that fucking you know. But you wrote, said yourself, his son's you. pretty. His son's pretty annoying. Pretty annoying. He's annoying. A, so. he's annoying. <laughs> But he's yeah. sitting there, and they're trying to fucking fix this fucking robot. Yeah, you know why? Because you got got nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so right, this can hey, this can go on all night. It can go, go on, on forever. <laughs> so so Ramsey gets a call at this point. Uh, this is where he gets the call. Yeah. I'm at uh this like this fucking unfinished high rise. Meet me there. Oh, the- foreshadowing. Remember that was when they'd gone to the first high rise because there was uh, a stacker. Yeah, Remember the stacker. The- he. What's and wrong with him? Droid. Well, he's and stacking Selleck, where there's nothing to stack. Yeah, yeah. and Selleck <laughs> is like, wow, you guys sure got a lot of robots working here. And right. the foreman, woman foreman is like, oh, you should see the other building. It's just all That's robots. Right. No yeah. humans at all. So, yeah, foreshadowing, yeah. wink, wink. And there's an open elevator on this building in the beginning we see. Yep. And he's so afraid of heights that he has Karen go and do this mission on the 18th floor right. to stop this robot. He can't even get on the elevator. Yep. So, he finds us out and he goes. But to the he stands room. directly underneath. He does. <laughs> he stacker. right where right where the fucking, fucking right is. where shit's fallen. So this stacker is eighteen <laughs> stories high, and the no, whole yeah, idea no helmet nothing. <laughs> the whole idea is well. The first thing is when they walk through that work site, nobody gave them helmets. But that's a whole other thing. Right. Yeah. OSHA this violations. Stacker, OSHA violations. One hundred percent. In a world of OSHA violations, <laughs> <laughs> this stacker droid is eighteen stories high. Yeah. And it's it's just flipping off like bags, like probably sixty pound bags of concrete. I and think they're Selleck, more than yeah, they're more than that. And Those are big is, fucking bags. Is standing within a half a foot of the drop right there. of drop yeah. zone. Yeah. He's not even uh, moving. Like three times, he almost yeah. gets hit by these fucking bags yeah. and never moves. It, it's 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 kind of embarrassing. So, um, <laughs> so he goes off, and then um, uh, Karen manages to <clears throat> fix um, Lois just enough that she hears the phone call. And she knows where they went. And then Lois just blows the fuck up. Yeah. Um, right there. Just blows the fuck up. All that uh, work. All that extra work Ramsey put in for nothing. All gone. All, all gone. gone. So Ramsey all for, gets... All for naught, as they say. All for naught. Yeah, he's going to have to get a Series 13 now, which I heard aren't as good as the 12. So right. Probably not. It's probably lemons. So he goes out to this high rise and... Um, did he ever say where it, he gets there? And there's there's a couple things. There's a bunch of spiders on the ground outside of the elevator. Or outside yep. of the elevator. Which they're not bothering anybody. No, and then there's a video 
of him and the kid, and it's basically like come up to the hundred and eighth floor. It's high. Yeah. It's way the fuck <laughs> it's up really there. high. <laughs> yeah. So he gets on this elevator and nothing but girders up here. The first thing I noticed was do you notice what the first button he hit said before start? No, oh, I didn't see. Human speed. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of really? clever. Well, right. I'm wonder, I'm wondering if like Space if balls. maybe if it's like a robot can handle like the faster uh, trip, the yeah. other button might be like robotic speed. But he hits human speed. That's funny. And then he hits start. He goes up, and as he's going up, he's just getting all fucking like dizzy, and they got the little sounds playing. He gets off finally on the on the correct uh, landing, and you know I've got your kid, Ramsey. I'm gonna kill him, and uh, you know go fuck yourself. Give him my kid. He gives him the kid very easily, right? Uh, right. Like, extremely easily. The kid gets on the elevator, Larry, but what do, we mentioned it earlier, what do we find out about the trip down now? So, yeah, so Selleck is like, all right, go ahead, uh, Flight of the Navigator kid. What's his name, Bobby? Yeah, go Bobby. ahead, Bobby. Uh, and Bobby hits down fucking uh, Simmons is like, ha, ha, ha. Ramsey. Got you, that out. <laughs> The spiders are programmed to let you come up, but they're programmed right. to kill the first person who gets off, Ramsey. <laughs> And, and this is where Ramsey screams for him to hit the button yeah. and the kid's oh, yeah. bag. Yeah. You know, what's the matter, daddy? It's like, fuck, hit the fucking button, you cretin. Um, <laughs> so he gets, to, now he gets to the bottom, right? But he kind of climbs up a little bit. And no, then Karen, uh, no, he doesn't. Karen, Karen shows Karen, up. Karen walks in and leaps bum, bum, up bum, and saves the day. Yeah, she like in a sundress. On. Yeah, in, a sun, yeah, in yeah. the dress. Yeah. And she jumps on the elevator. All she does is climb up. Yeah. She walks right by, yeah, she walks right by all the spiders. She jumps onto the elevator and she grabs him and they start climbing up, uh climbing up the side. Yeah. Right. So so we gotta figure easy to get out of that. Yeah, yeah. it was super easy. Yeah, and yeah. then up on the the floor, uh the hundred and ninth. Hundred and ninth floor, uh Luther starts to shoot his bullets. Yeah. At, you know, real quick, I want I want to bring this up because we, we skipped it. It's not super important, but I just thought it was a weird, a weird little bit. Did you guys think it was weird that at one point the they wanted to know more about Luther? So the captain sends Ramsey to their to psychic. The psychic. To the psychic. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a psychic. Yeah. Yeah. I and wish. The- yeah, and you so know, it reminded weird. it reminded me of Beverly Hills Cop. Remember when he was being Johnny Wishbone? Yeah, professional psychic Johnny Wishbone. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, they have one in this fucking department. Which did they ever say what city this is? Like, I, never, I think L.A. L.A. Okay, I don't remember. I was like, I'm like, I'm not sure what city this is supposed to be. Like Detroit Rock City, know. maybe. Oh, yeah. you're going to lose your mind in Detroit, <laughs> Rock City. I, I just thought it was weird that we had to throw in this one scene out of nowhere yeah. to establish that there's psychics in this world. And, and she all- was, and she was legit. Apparently, she was legit. She's like, yeah. she's like, it's a biblical name, Lucifer. Yeah, uh, Luther. Like she's like, holy, you're like, holy shit. Oh, and that you know what? Since we're back all the way back there, where did? Luther get a replica of Selleck's eyeball for the yes. retina scanner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when yes. he did that, I was like, I was like, holy shit, that's cool. And then like at the same breath, I'm like, but how did he get a replica of his eyeball? Yeah. Like, when, uh, when he when he walks into the to the station with the eyeball, my first thought is uh because he's wearing a cop uniform, is that we yeah. were gonna eventually see like in the hallway a dead cop with a with a missing eye. Right. But then you find out it's it's it Selleck's re- uh, retina scan so i'm assuming maybe from the retina scan at vectricon he was able to like clone it but the only yeah. problem with all this is that they show you none of this in the movie no he's like just got a fake eyeball that works maybe there's doors. a deleted scene somewhere yeah. <laughs> maybe i don't know because then i wondered like so obviously luther made him go to that building because he knew he was afraid of heights i'm like did he know he was afraid of heights was like that information in his fake eyeball like yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> How did he know? Well, that? he has been. Or was it on his? In. Was it so, on his MySpace profile that he was looking at while he was at the police station? I think oh, just he... by observation, he figured that one out. I don't know. Yeah. So, so Luther uh, started <clears throat> shooting at him, and of course, now the bullets are completely dodgeable. Well, uh, Ramsey, yeah. not Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey hit a switch to turn on the machine. Supposedly, the machines give off heat too. They do. So but, it was but confusing. Stan, but I know Stan it goes Shaw, against the rules that they yeah, already set. Right. Yeah. The rules Stan they Shaw, set was that uh, it could pad be patterned after your your, after your heat pattern. Right. Yeah. Which you would yeah. figure by this time he had programmed them all to fucking seek out Ramsey. So they should have just ignored the robots and yeah. shot him. They're breaking their own rules, which I hate in a fucking movie. If you set rules. You know the frighteners. Don't fucking break them. Oh, stop! Don't. Do, Sorry, don't I. You know, 
I'm still just, hurt by that. I'm trashing that episode. It's never coming out. Hey, you never put it out, did you? <laughs> Not yet. Hey. It's coming. It's oh, coming shit. to the Pint That's Insiders. A good one, yeah. folks. You'll like go, that. Go to uh, go to Patreon uh, back our Patreon <laughs> slash the Pint two fifty a month. I think we actually get... changed John's mind a little bit. Uh, not, maybe a little, but not a, a lot. A little bit, a quarter we, point, maybe. We talked about yeah. the frighteners. It's going to be fun. All right. So <laughs> Ramsey ends up running onto the elevator again yeah. to kind of escape Luther and, and the and the gunshots. And uh, somehow the, the elevator just starts going up, and it gets out of control, and it starts going all. It's going robot right. speed, right? I, right, yeah, it's robot, it's robot speed. speed. Yeah, it is fucking. It's gone yeah. plaid. It's all the way to the top. speed. <laughs> plaid. So I will say. <laughs> I will say another shot I liked in this movie a lot is the elevator when it finally stops and he rolls over and he slowly crawls to the edge of the elevator to look over. I thought that was a pretty good shot. I enjoyed that. Okay. That's not the shot I thought you were going to say. What shot? What shot did you like? I thought you were going to say when the elevator goes back down and he's laying there and it stops right at fucking Gene Simmons' feet. That's good too. Aaron down at him like the sinister look. I'm like, fuck, you fucked up, Ramsey. Yeah, like that, that. I thought that was a great scene. That was a good. Show. I thought there was, there was some listen, good. I think, work Simmons, I think Simmons is great in this fucking movie. I think. Yeah. I think. I really he's, do. I think he's good in this movie. I think his character is written terribly in this movie. Mm. Uh, it, like his motivation and stuff is just like. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's motiv- It's really you know left up to i don't know if it was on the cutting room floor or left up to you i I think on the cutting room floor i they they talk about him with this reverence and almost like he's going to be a bond villain and then he's just like he's just a guy that wants to sell these things and he's menacing and i I think a lot of his delivery is pretty pretty good um sometimes it falls a little flat in, in certain cases but he's mostly over the top and he's and got that great smile and sneer he's got that he's always look. Had. Yeah. Oh, yeah totally has the look yeah these aren't all the templates ramsey <laughs> <laughs> so R- ramsey ends up at the very top of the building uh he ends up having to crawl under the elevator he's got some of these robot spiders coming after him he manages he's to- hanging like who knows yeah he's, he's hanging in there yeah, yeah one of them fucking hits him right in the hand like because he's on yeah. the the side of the elevator is just like a great and one of these spiders just fucking sticks the needle right in his hand. Apparently does decides not to inject the acid at that yeah, point. Right. But whatever. It still just sticks him in the hand and he almost they, falls off. And they, they already they already had his face by that point, right? <laughs> those fucking yeah. those spiders bukkakied that fucking guy. He, oh yeah. <laughs> he took he took two fucking hot loads right to the side of the face. <laughs> yeah. But he, he manages to beat them. He, he knocks them off, they blow up. He throws his yeah. coat on one, it yeah. blows up. Everything he farted too loud, one blows up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um it gets, seems uh, like you would just be able to pick it up from the top and right. just yeah and just throw, throw it. it right over the side of they the are leapers they're leaping they're leapers. spiders and as manster, and manster they look you, terrible <laughs> you you said manster before we recorded you kind of made uh, like a, an analogy of what these things looked like what does it look like when they leap yeah so it looks like <laughs> when they're leaping at you it actually looks like you've thrown them in reverse it, it does kind of look like someone just tossed yeah. it <laughs> um, which is probably exactly what yeah. happens very yeah. very true this is obviously practical effects yeah um so ramsey gets to the bottom of the elevator where it makes sense. If you had to have some kind of override switch, you'd put it on the bottom of the elevator. Um, he manages to turn the override switch on. He gets back up through a, a manhole inside the elevator. I don't know if elevators have manholes, but he gets this back in does. the elevator and then yeah. he ends up on, on, uh, on, on the level, like Larry said, great scene where great Luther's scene. just staring him down. It's like, yeah, you're done now. How does yeah. he end up? Does he grab him and pull him into the elevator? I don't remember. Yeah. What there. Yeah. It was like a tussle. Like he grabs, uh, oh, we got a tussle. There's a There's tussle. Definitely a tussle. Oh, we gonna tussle, Gene Simmons. And then, and then Simmons falls all of like eight feet off of the fucking elevator onto the ground. Yeah, they're they're going down now. Now remember, Bobby got saved, so nobody's come off the elevator yet. They're right. programmed to kill the first person. That but I had elevator. thought. Now is it just me, or did you wonder why the, all those spiders were down there when they had already? Come, I thought those were the ones that had came up. Oh no, no, he has attacks. Apparently, I thought <laughs> I, we, I, we are legion. every time I'd seen the movie, I had always assumed that the spiders came up from the bottom floor to get Ramsey at the top. Like, but I guess those were different spiders attacking wow. him at the top. Mm-hmm. Alpha those, squad those were different ones, yeah. Alpha squad on the on the floor, gotcha. beta squad uh, yeah, up in it. the uh, yeah. So, uh, 
they're they're heading down really fast to the bottom, and then fucking Ramsey he, he hits the stop button. Is stop what button. Thing. Stop. Yeah. Mash the stop button, Ramsey, and yeah. fucking and Gene Simmons catapults like, him right like off. The goddamn demon he is. Yeah. He flies yeah. off that elevator and lands yeah. fucking right in the middle of these fucking robots. God of thunder. <laughs> <laughs> And and he is just fucking. He gets overwhelmed by these things. They're fucking stabbing him. They're he doesn't fucking, have. Apparently, he doesn't have like a kill switch. Would, yeah, you'd figure like yeah. yeah, they'd be programmed not to attack him or something. Right, like, right. Or just Wouldn't some he? sort of word that he says that turns. He's yeah. a goddamn mad genius. You don't think right. he can program something yeah. where they wouldn't attack him? They would sense his body heat. Yeah, because you figure they could sense body heat, like the bullets. Maybe I don't know. Right. Well, I'm just just say fuck no, and then they all turn off. You know. Yeah. We talk about how that? how awful those bullets looked while they were flying. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, like when like, they like, actually showed the bullet, like they look they look like oh, long cut, smooth they, turds. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it did look like long smooth turds. <laughs> I won't of... eat. I won't eat white dog. I got a belly full of white dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not licking the white dog shit. He's talking uh, to Stan Shaw about about the about I, the bullet. You know, there's there's a scene earlier in the movie where Stan Shaw shows him how the bullets work, and yeah. and Randy I love how him. Stan Shaw had cut it he cut perfectly it. down he cut the middle. Did he right froze, the middle. froze it first. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what did he do? <laughs> he froze it and cracked it open. But it would have been better if when they went over to that little vice when he was doing all that stuff, it was just a fucking cat turd. And yeah. he's like, <laughs> he's got a gun that fires cat turds. <laughs> <laughs> they won't kill you. They won't kill you, but it's got yeah. a fucking stank. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so oh, he gets look, killed. Oh, it so silly. It looks so silly. He gets killed, and and yeah. Ramsey gets off the elevator. The day's been saved. Bobby, they're hugging. Uh, but Larry, scary Larry, might I add, yeah. we have to have a horror movie moment here, right? Yeah. For, for one moment. What happens? So, like we had mentioned, when these spiders attack people, they inject their fucking acid and then they blow up. Right. You you mentioned the scene in the bathroom. They actually caught that guy's legs on fire who were outside of the stall. Like that yeah. guy caught fire uh, when they attack Gene and he gets attacked by, I don't like seven, eight of them. Like, yeah, they inject him in the neck, like under the chin, like one in the balls, like one in the thigh, Run, one in the dick hole. <laughs> but they don't they don't oh. blow up. Oh, man. So he's he's laying there. Looks dead, of course. Eyes are not, open. Not moving, not breathing. Not moving. You know, the spiders are still... Se- they, they think they're smoking. I think the spiders are smoking. They, they I think you're smoke. right. Yeah. 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 Heavy, acrid smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, Ramsey leans down to make sure he's dead. And, of course, then you get the carry White uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, jump scare where he makes a strange... He, like, he goes, ah! Like, it's a yeah. weird noise. And then just immediately dies. Croaks. Yeah. Croaks immediately. Yeah, and, and and but but Tom Selleck doesn't jump because you cannot. No, you can't scare. No, that you have a mustache like that. You can't be frightened. You don't scare by me, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons coming back to life. <laughs> you know what the uh, secret is the actual secret is Tom Selleck. He's afraid of Ace Freely. He's that's not right. afraid. He's right, never been right. afraid of the fucking demon. Ac- Ac- he's, ac- afraid, he's afraid of the spaceman. Come on, don't you get yeah. the ac- ac- afraid of cat. cat? He's afraid of the cat. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's afraid ac- of the space. All right, so uh, we get the last uh, little bit there where yeah. after all this flirting throughout the whole thing, and there's been a couple of like but kind was of jokes. there flirting? Well, well Tom like, Selleck never once yeah. flirted with her. It was he weird. was like, hey, I invite all he, my partners to dinner. He finally Yeah, he turned her off with that comment. He turned her totally off when he was like, yeah. I invite all my partners. Like, let's she was go to nice dinner. And moist before then. Oh, she was wet as fuck. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. Sli- she was like a snail. She was leaving a slime trail. <laughs> she was. <Aww. laughs> and and then at the end, he's like, you know, well, let's 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 do that dinner, you know. And then and then she's like, you know, she rubs his nose and he gives her a little dink. And then he says the the line that made my wife's stomach turn. He's like, yeah. Can you cook? <laughs> because you well, two reasons it's crash because number one it's like harsh on women and number two would he have asked for that if lois had survived i was just gonna say yeah. lois is dead so who's gonna fucking cook because right. apparently lois is the one who makes the glass coffee pot full of noodles dude <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like is that a mr coffee that she's making pasta in <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think i think hey, lois- hold on he told her to forget about the dinner and she just left that shit boiling on the stove not just that but like here's something else weird and i get it i understand people work weird weird shifts and everything but i'm always i'm always like kind of weirded out by this L- lloyd and i did an episode not too long ago a video episode on the insider with uh julio from the contrarians where we talked about chainsaw massacre 2 and the fact that like <clears throat> it seems like they're preparing their dinner at like two in the morning when <laughs> yeah. Selick gets home it's <laughs> yeah. 10 45 yeah. and he asked her if bobby <laughs> ate 
And then they're talking for a while. So you got to assume it's like 11.15. And then she's like, would you like me to prepare dinner? I'm like, it's 11.15 at fucking night. Just, just, go, to just go to bed. Just go to sleep. Just get a bag of chips or something. Grab a bag or of have, chips. Have an apple. Have a bowl of cereal. Be dry, right. however the fuck you want to do it. Oh, yeah. Dry, <laughs> not dry bowl. That's fine. Yeah. I think it was a Mr. Coffee that he was making the fucking it, noodles. I 100% agree with you. It was Mr. Whatever, Coffee. Whatever they were boiling those noodles in was not made for fucking noodles. It was no. made <laughs> for a brewed <laughs> beverage, yeah. probably coffee. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit, uh, Lloyd, about the box office of this thing. So I'm talking about fractions of a penny here. And uh, over time, they add up to a lot. So this movie was released, like you said, uh, 1214. So the week before Christmas, 1984, had a lot of other stuff going up against it. So that weekend, it did make $1.2 million. <laughs> What was the, do you have the budget on this? Yeah, the budget was uh, $8 million. Impressive. $8 Absolutely. million. Pretty right. good for that budget. There's some good, I mean, the, the robotics might be a little wonky now, but I mean, right. for that you got to figure, you got to figure Gene Simmons took at least $6 million. Yeah. That. Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah. That's he probably, cheap. he probably actually somehow uh, in his contract owns the rights to Tom Selleck's mustache. He probably does. Oh, God. Yeah. I bet you're right. Um, so, yeah, I came in seventh that week, but there was a lot of movies in the first, uh, first, week of released uh so including 1984 a passage to india ah. S- starman which finished I above runaway love starman. Love the cotton starman. club dune finished number two and those were all first week releases uh and then the number one movie that week second week release beverly hills cop oh, oh, look at that. Uh, uh, and runaway finished just ahead of the terminator that week um but Terminator uh, had been out. Yeah. Terminator, I was say, out Terminator was in his 68th week. No, only eight <laughs> eight weeks, but it just right. barely barely eked it out. Run, yeah. Runaway, real quick, uh, was considered a huge disappointment that year because oh, at yeah. the beginning of the year, uh, I, I guess like uh, the hype for science fiction movies was Runaway was going to be a huge hit, and then movies like Terminator came out of nowhere and fucking creamed it. So as I said, the opening weekend was about 1.2 million. Rough. The full box office on the year was 6.7. Oof. Oh yeah! No one went to see this barely after that week. Uh, I'll give you some other stuff from that year. I'm honestly surprised that it didn't make more just on Kiss fans alone. Yeah. Well, maybe Kiss it's all Kiss big. Fans. Maybe, yeah, Kiss maybe was, it's all Kiss fans. Yeah, yeah it must be because Kiss was still big, man. So uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you number eleven that year. Purple Rain, sixty-eight Purple million. Rain. Then we got Splash at ten. Star oh, Trek Splash. three: The Search for Spock, number nine. Romancing the Stone, Footloose. Yeah. But loose also with Cynthia. She was Police Academy, The Karate Kid, Gremlins, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom at number three, Ghostbusters at number two, and the aforementioned Beverly Hills Cop at number one. Big year for movies, man. Yeah, good year. Good year. Um, Breakin' came in at number 18. Yeah. Breaking and Breaking Two came out. The and Breaking Two came out. Uh, Electric okay. Boogaloo at number sixty three. Yeah. Runaway was way down there, uh, number ninety eight on the year. Yeah, I think <sighs> Canon made Breaking One and Two, and they made so much money off of the first Breaking, which was like a, a very low budget movie, that they they greenlit Breaking Two, and it came out like yeah. four months after Breaking One. Yeah, same year. <laughs> yeah. So, All right. Yeah, Turbo that's and Ozone office. weren't too busy. That's right. No, yeah, really, they're, they're fine. The Boogaloo Shrimp didn't have much to do that year, otherwise. <laughs> All right, that's our box office, so let's just get right into it, and uh, let's rate this thing. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. All right, zero to five. Zero being the worst thing ever, five being the best thing ever. Quarter and half scale optional. I'm going to start this time. This is what we've referred to before here on The Pint uh, as an HBO movie for me. This was on HBO, I don't know, every day of my childhood, and I watched it an awful lot. Um, and I've always enjoyed this movie. Um, I log my stuff into Letterboxd, and I had just watched this two years ago during the pandemic, like in October or something. So two years, and before that, <clears throat> and before that was probably literally like two years before that. So I have watched this multiple times in the last few years. This is one of those movies that I enjoy, and that on my letterbox I give the heart to, but I can't give it a great rating. Because it really isn't a great movie. There's the first like 25 minutes of the movie is us following these runaway cops on their um kind of their missions. And the first two missions are completely uninvolving. Like it's I was a, gonna say they're not even interesting. They're not like, even interesting. It's like one of them is a is a, a robot that kills grubs and it's just going through a cornfield. 
And then the next one is a robot that's supposed to stack shit and it's throwing shit off a building. <laughs> and then we finally get to the murderous one and we're already <laughs> 25 minutes in. Right. I like Tom Selleck. You know what? Hey, in an alternate universe, uh, he is Indiana Jones. He was hired and uh, he couldn't do it because of Magnum P.I. So Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. So imagine how different this guy's life would have been. But I'm fine with him being a non-Magnum fan. <clears throat> I've always found him to be affable. Cynthia Rhodes is hot in this, and she's uh, fine. She, she does a good job. Um, decent supporting casters. They're not given anything to do. Stan Shaw. I love Stan Shaw. He doesn't do much. GW Bailey doesn't do much. Right. Um, and I like, you know, I love Kiss. And uh, and Gene Simmons is, is, again, poorly written character, but very menacing. He looks like a bad guy, right? If Gene Simmons was the cop in this movie, it would never have worked because he <laughs> looks like a fucking bad guy. I'm going to go with, I'm going to use the word solid. I'm going to use the word solid because... I still enjoy this movie, but it's a 2.75. It doesn't Ooh. even get to a three. It's a 2.75. I'll watch this movie again in two years. I will throw it on again and <clears throat> think about this episode and, you know, look at the little robot spiders and ha 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 and all that stuff. But yeah, it's 2.75. Larry, what do you give 1984's Runaway? Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head when you said it was an HBO movie. This was just one of those. It was on constantly. I don't think I ever saw it on any other medium uh until i bought it on vhs because you know i'm fucking stupid but it's nothing i ever saw in a theater it's nothing that uh i don't think has ever played in a theater again uh after it was <laughs> released no well, larry um, i do i do know someone that can do that i'm just saying oh you know a guy you i know, know a guy, guy could... that if, if he ever wanted it to happen can probably make that happen yeah i probably could but would i is the real question <laughs> exactly I, I, I said before, I think Gene Simmons is great. Gene Simmons does what he needs to do in this role. And it's look like a bad guy. And he looks like a bad guy. And he delivers his lines like, you know, he's over the top. He's definitely over the top. But I enjoy it. Uh, Cynthia Rhodes is awesome. I've liked her in everything. Uh, Kirstie Alley is much better in this than she ever was in Cheers. Uh, she uh. frankly ruined that fucking show. But. Uh, well, no, she didn't ruin it. Diane left, ruined it when she left. But that's a whole other fucking story. Um, but you're right. This movie is not very good. Uh, however, I do enjoy it. And I think I enjoy it more for nostalgia's sake than I enjoy it Agreed, for being yeah. for being a good movie. I'm going to actually go lower than you and go two and a half. Mm. Um, again, I will watch it again. Uh, I do enjoy it, but it's, I find myself realizing that I enjoy it more for the nostalgia of it. If tomorrow mm -hmm. arrow or, you know, or any of those, uh, boutique label, uh, uh, that put out Blu-rays, put this out yep. and it was 40 bucks and it had all kinds of extras. I'd buy it in a second. I okay. would buy this movie in a fucking heartbeat. Especially if you told me there's deleted for 40 scenes, bucks. I, I would, I'd pay 40, especially if you told me there's deleted <clears throat> scenes. Yeah. You tell me okay. there's deleted scenes that they've unearthed, and I I want to see them because I want to. I I feel like, and we mentioned it briefly. I feel like there's there's a good part of this movie left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, I, I I did read that that there were some scenes not in there. Yeah, there has to be because there, yeah. there's just some shit that just they don't spend enough time on. Um, I feel like Crichton probably turned in, you know, a two a two hour movie, and they were like, no, no, you gotta you gotta cut this down. Yeah, I, this by the way, I forgot to mention at the beginning. I always forget. It's on Tubi if you want to check it out. Yeah, I think it's an hour and forty minutes. Right? It's it's yeah. pretty brisk. It's, it's not right. long. Yeah. All right, Manster, what do you give it? Wow. So you guys reiterated like a lot of things that I was going to say. So I will say that Tom Selleck, like as soon as he's on screen, you can you can just sense that he's like a TV like like not, I don't want to say dad, but he's very comforting. Okay. Right. He's very comforting. Uh, he's very nice. He doesn't create a lot of tension, except for when he's like abruptly shouting at people. Get out of the fuck! Yeah, wait, 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 the scene where they're gonna get in the in the police, the automated police car, and that guy's like, "What's going on, Ramsey?" And he's like, "Don't touch the car." And the guy's like, oh, yeah. "I'm your old buddy." He's like, "Don't touch the fucking car!" That's right. Like he's just yelling at everybody, and, and he yeah. does that to uh, like three or four people in in the movie. Yeah, I I think because he's so fucking likable that he doesn't create that tension that I think this film would need to be considered like a good movie um like i said before the robots you can defeat most of them just by like throwing a blanket on them yeah which i found pretty funny uh gene simmons obviously he's got the look he's menacing he's over the top uh that was great um 
however, I mean, it sounds like I'm saying bad things, but everything sort of comes together in a weirdly entertaining way, you know? And for me, it's not so much nostalgia. I think I watched this when I was probably, I don't know, 14 or something, but I don't remember. I've never seen it since then. And it was all new to me this time, but be, and being a Michael Crichton movie, I did learn a few things like uh, it's picking up diphenyl compounds and tetral hydrocarbons. So that's oh, yeah. cool. Right. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah. What was that guy? He's pretty smart. Um, but I'm going to, I I'm like echoing you guys. I'm giving it a solid, solid two and a half out of five. All right. Here we are in SFA eighties. We talked about runaway 1984, probably maybe in any episode we've ever done, or at least in a long time, the most middling movie that we all liked quite a yeah. bit somehow. Oh, one um, other thing that I don't think we all, any of us mentioned. I yeah. believe this is the first fully electronically synthesized soundtrack. I don't know if it's fully it, all electronic music. Okay. Hmm. I did yeah. read I did read a note on that, but I thought it was the composer's first oh, maybe electronic. That's, all right. Yeah, maybe I'm reading my note wrong. All right. Uh, well, I'll double check it. If you're right, I'll leave it in. If you're wrong, I'll edit it so no one says, fuck Lloyd. Uh, you'll leave it, it in anyway. Bullshit. I'm going to leave it in no matter what. <laughs> All right, so this has been fun. Again, if you're out there, uh, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, enjoy it. Have a good time. If you do not, pretty please with sugar on top. Have a great fourth Thursday <clears throat> in November, and we're getting to the end of the year. It's fucking nuts. We're almost at 2023. Larry, thanks for hanging out and doing a uh, a fun one with us. Yeah. And as always, Lloyd, tell everybody where they can find us and then get us the fuck out of here. Well, you can find us on Apple, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, I use a little thing called Pocket Cast that works pretty good. Or or you could just do this. Here, here put me next to your uh, Alexa. Go, hey, Alexa, play the Pint Podcast. You can do that. You can find us there, too. There's a YouTube channel, uh, Facebook and YouTube. It's the Pint, a pop culture podcast. And on Instagram and Twitter, it's at the Pint Podcast. And I just said that out loud, and my fucking Alexa is playing it right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's upstairs. And right. the Patreon, oh yeah, become a pint insider at uh, patreon.com slash the pint. Yeah, 250, 250 gets you a lot of good content and stickers. Stickers, get content. stickers. That's right. Always trying to come up with some good stuff. All right. So enjoy your Thanksgiving, or if you're not a celebrator, enjoy your day off, hopefully. And until right. then, see ya. See ya. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off.